Let Mike me Kershaw steal. is having another terrific season. But he is a little bit different pitcher in the last couple years. Fair to say that he's evolved into a a little bit different. Yeah, he used to be an if so can sure. describe. Yeah, well, yeah. I think that you know over the course of of time, I mean, you're gonna uh, you're not gonna be the same pitcher you were when you broke into the league. I remember when I first saw Clayton Kershaw. It was you know, fastball scattered around the zone and a, and a curveball. And then he became Clay Kershaw, where the, the fastball command became outstanding. He developed a slider, uh, still had a devastating hook with, with more command. And then over time, you, you lose a little bit of velocity. So the, the mid 90s fastball is is no longer in play, but it's but there's still life to the fastball. He throws a lot of fastballs. The slider has become, uh, I think, more commanded. He still uses the hook. The hook is the, hook's, the hook velocity is down. And it used to be like in the high 70s, 80s. Now it's in the low 70s, but it's still very effective. So. Still very effective. He's just, you know, he's more change of speeds, much improved command. The walks are still down, still able to get strikeouts, but it's not the, you know, the hard throwing, you know, turn it loose Texan. Buddy, with um, the the way that things have been playing the last couple of series, I know you guys just kind of concentrate on pitching, but do you sure. in Talking to the pitchers, acknowledge, hey, the part's playing a little bit different, just be tough about it? Or uh, How do you yeah, handle that? We talk about these things, sure. I mean, that's part of something we talk about not only now, but you know, off-season spring training, uh, you, know, uh, you know, to our pitchers and about the certain types of pitchers that, you know, we want to be part of our pitching staff. So, again, it, it, we've, we've said this before. Uh, the most important thing is to win the game. Right. Out pitch the other team to win the game, regardless whether it's a one nothing game or games like we've seen lately. And, and in most cases, if, if you pitch well to fundamental pitching principles, uh, I think you give yourself a chance, a better chance to, to out pitch the other team. So, you know, we do talk so much about, you know, not letting certain events or outcomes uh, change your your mentality, your mindset, your aggressiveness. Uh, you know, we, we talk about the mental toughness that our pitchers have to have here. You know, that's, that's regardless of, you know, what time of the year we're talking, off-season, spring training, during the season. So, you know, we, we talk, uh, you know, we talk about these things. Has the, this last seven, eight games here, has it been the biggest test of that part of the philosophy? Um, yeah. Know. Well, sure, you're always testing when, uh, you know, when things go haywire, right? It's easy to, it's very easy to keep, uh, you know, composure in a level head when, uh, you know, you pull when things are going your way and, and things are positive and things aren't going to skew. Uh, it's much tougher. What's up? You have to, you know, to keep your confidence, to keep level-headed, to keep the things that we talked about, keeping in order as far as your aggressiveness, your mindset, your composure, your poise, your confidence when things go like they have. Is there a way in these kind of chaotic environments? We've seen some quotes come out of the other clubhouse about just how crazy this has been. Can that be turned into an advantage for your guys? I think should so. be more used yeah, to it. Yeah, sure. We talked about that. Yeah. Yes, I think, you know, on the position player side, uh, I think our guys are used to this for sure. On the pitching side, uh, you know, I, it, it can be used to our advantage, I think, yeah, because we know what we're up against. And what, what makes it hard a little bit, you know, the physical part of it, you know, recovering and, and continue to, you know, continue to make pitches. But uh, in most cases, the other side, they're in for three games and out. You know, we're here for, you know, Entire season to, to keep that mindset. So, uh, but you know, with that, we know uh, you know we know from experience what can happen. What does it say about your lineup that David Dahl 
has been on a really good tear for quite a while now. Even when he wasn't getting hits on the road trip, he was you know, hitting with impact. And it's hard to notice because so many people in your lineup yeah. are doing well. Well, yeah, David's having, you know, he's having a fantastic year. Uh, and, you know, he'll, and he'll get his share of, uh, you know, I think more, more acclaim or more exposure, you know, if he continues this. Uh, and, you know, like we, like we talked about before, I think it takes, uh, you know, a number of years of performance and passing, and passing test of time to, you know, to, you know, to, I don't want to say get noticed, but to, you know, on a national stage to, to get out there. I think it took Nolan a few years. It took, you know, Charlie a few years. You know, a lot of our guys. And that, that's the case everywhere, really. So, but I do like the fact that I'm hearing David's name amongst other managers and coaches and, 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 and sports writers and people involved in the game. Because it, it should be explained great. Right? Well, there's a... Obviously, we notice that the, uh, the toll it takes on these long, high-scoring games on bullpens and starters, etc. <coughs> yeah. What about the catchers? Because in my opinion, catching is one of the most physically demanding positions in all sports. <coughs> so, I mean, you just tell me, hey, just going to have to battle through this stretch and yeah. try to give them as much yeah. time off as... Yeah, and off. It, you, know, those, you, know, they're, you know, they're flip-flopping their guys right all you know, every day. And, you know, you know, Tony's uh, catching night. But it's hard. You know, these are these are hard, long, hard games for the catcher, for sure. Because you're, you know, because physically and even mentally, you know, and you're, you're putting signs down. You're, you're trying to help the pitchers make pitches, and things aren't going your way. There's again frustration on the catching position too, and that and that wears on you. Know, you feel, you, you know, all all catchers worth their salt feel responsible for you know the amount of runs they're being scored. And conversely, they should be be very proud when there's a little score game. So, you know, they beat themselves up too. So, but there's a, there's definitely that component. How do you, as a manager, <clears throat> not just for catchers, but all all the all your players and pitchers, take care of the the mental exhaustion, knowing that like you're playing games <coughs> where ten runs in the fifth might not be enough, and you have to keep going, keep on over the long. Do you have to it's keep hard. an eye on this. Uh, yeah, but again, I think our guys are conditioned to this. You know, they they meaning Nolan, Charlie, Trevor. Trevor. Uh, you know, Desi's getting used to it. Murph's first year. You know, Chris has been here before. Tony's been here. Yeah, they're, you know, they're conditioned for these types of games. How about for you? Somebody who loves good uh, pitching. Yeah. Somebody who keeps track of every single pitch all game long. Sure. Has to make multiple moves. Yeah. Do sometimes do you just kind of? Uh, I mean, is it well, exhaust you? Yeah, I think you know. I tell players all the time that they should be mentally tired after every day, and they are because they're you know they're thinking and they're and they're and they're working and their brain should be working you know for for three hours. I think same with the coaches too. You know, so that includes me. Yeah. But I, I can't uh, you know the, you know 17 and 18. I didn't see a stretch of games like this that we've seen. That's true, right? That's true. Now, whether that was a function of better pitching, I don't know. I, I would like to think part, most of it is other factors. Other factors that are happening now this year that are a little bit different. And again, across the whole landscape of the game. We talked about that yesterday. More homers in the minors, more homers in the big leagues. Uh, you know, there's a crazy game going on as we speak over in uh, the United States. 17 to 6, I believe, was the final. Oh, 17 to 10. 12. No. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. Oh, never mind. No. Since we came out. It is now 17 to 13. <laughs> in the uh, bottom of the eighth, Ottavino's in the game. <laughs> hey, those guys can't hit if you get them away from London to the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so 17 13 over there in the London Olympic Stadium. Oh, How about that? Buddy, um, with uh, with the Futures game coming up, what's your assessment on Ben Bowden? You saw him some in spring training, and what are you what are you hearing about him right now? Uh, you know, I'm excited for Ben to you know get in this game, and I hope he shows uh, you know the big arm that he has and has a has a good clean inning. But again, I think that uh, you know what we saw in spring training is sort of what we what we've heard uh, during the regular season: aggressive with the fastball. 
developing slider and change, but and has moved to AAA. You know, getting acclimated to AAA, uh, the AAA environment, AAA hitters, a little, a little faster game, a little better, little better hitter. So he's grown. So from the other side of the dugout, whenever you used to come in here, I know one of your rules is to be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. were, were you ready for a potential offensive outburst or something? Was that right. did that go into your? That's planning? always that's always in there. Yeah. I don't. I think from either side. Uh, I don't think you, uh, you know, and players feel the same thing. You never feel as though you're out of the game. Um, you know, but really, I, I feel that way no matter where we are. I do. I do. I do. Well, granted, if it's, uh, you know, if it's 10 to nothing and you're in uh, New York and DeGrom's on the mound, you know, that's, you know, that's a different ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they look great about yeah. uh, uh, Even here, remember? I mean, uh, Hamels uh, was up 7, 6, 7, 8 to 1. I, that was a little dicey, too. Didn't feel great about that. But I'm, I'm always optimistic about where and everything. Yeah. Very, very rarely do I white flag. Yeah. And you'll, you'll see the games where we take some guys out. Oh, yeah, on the other side, man, I mean, I, I know coming in here that position players like coming in here. Hard <laughs> yes. And, you know, pitchers, you know, you know, not that they dread them, they know that they you know, got to make pitches. You got to keep the ball down. There just hasn't been a lot of ball pitch, a lot of great pitches down. 